Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing the top 5 smallest MLB stadiums in the year 2023 and discussing how this has happened with each of these stadiums, why are they so small, have they had seats taken out, and what is the future. The first thing I want to mention, I'm not including Tropicana Field, because Tropicana Field, if you take off the tarps, it can seat around 42,000. Technically on Wikipedia, it says only 25K, but that is not a legitimate number in the playoffs when the Rays make the playoffs, they will have playoff games that probably have an attendance of around 37K. If they remove all of the tarps, it would be around 42. The reason this is listed as 25 is because the Rays have closed the entire upper deck due to some attendance issues, but I am not including Tropicana Field. So we'll be starting at the number five smallest stadium in MLB, and it's actually Target Field, which is a relatively new stadium open in 2010 with a capacity right above 38,000. You can take a look at its capacity history. Not much going on there. They have received a few renovations, mainly based around a brand new scoreboard, but they have lost around 1,000 in terms of overall capacity going from 39,500 to 38,5000, which is where they stand today. It is the smallest footprint in MLB target field is, so very hard to fit in a lot of seats. The main emphasis on target field was outfield seating, very, very small upper deck. Target field, I really like. It's one of the underrated stadiums in baseball. Kind of surprising the Twins have struggled a little bit with attendance, but some of that is due to April being a complete wash considering how cold it is up in Minneapolis in that early month of the year, but generally the reason the capacity is so low on this stadium is because it's a small footprint and also they did design it in a way with a very small upper deck, but there is a lot of outfield seating, which I like because I feel like outfield seating gives a ballpark a little bit of character, but Target Field comes in at number five in smallest MLB stadiums. At number four, it is Kauffman Stadium. They've got a capacity just under 38,000. Kauffman Stadium opening back all the way, part of the Truman Sports Complex in 1973. There have been discussions about possibly moving downtown, a new stadium in 2027. We'll have to see what happens there when it comes to the Royals. Kind of an interesting thing. You take a look at their attendance history. They open in 1973, 40,000. The attendance goes slightly up and then it goes back down to 37K all while having a big time renovation where they added seats into the outfield because remember, originally there was nothing out there. They add the waterfalls and then they add seating. You might be wondering if they're adding seating to the outfield area, why would the capacity go down? Well, if you actually take a look at the seating that they added, it was very, very small. It was not like they added seven or 8,000 seats, just kind of a few different sections. Personally, I really like Kauffman Stadium, although I do understand it is a dated look. It's got a weird upper deck that curves down on each side. So that is something a little bit quirky about it. Remember, the upper deck design, I mean, it was in the 70s. They have not changed that at all. The only thing they changed in relation to the upper deck was the color, changing the color to dark blue, which was a really good idea. But, you know, they've lost a few thousand in terms of capacity. They're really struggling this year with attendance. But when it comes to the Royals, I would expect a move downtown probably by 2027 or 2028. It really is a shame because I do like Kauffman Stadium. I think it's a mid-tier MLB stadium. But unfortunately, the attendance woes and the ballpark location will very likely force a move. Kansas City doesn't need that big of a stadium. The new one that they're thinking about, I would estimate, probably going to seat right around 35,000 people. Moving on to the number three smallest MLB stadium in 2023. Of course, it is Fenway Park, 37,500. The original capacity all the way back in 1912 was 35K. And then it kind of hovered around that pretty much throughout its entire life. You can see the different day-night seating capacity 
I'm really not even sure that's worth mentioning. It, it's because they have to put a tarp on the center field seats during the day because batters can't pick up the ball with like the fans in the backdrop. But it only affects, I mean, how many, how many, it only affects like 400 seats, I feel like. Either way, you can kind of see how it fluctuates, and they're standing right now, 37K. The crazy thing about Fenway Park, the reason it's so small is due to the upper deck being virtually non existent. Also, you have those Fenway seats, that's really no attendance, so it's not like you have any real seating out in left field above the monster. That is why it's so small. And of course, being built in 1912, this ballpark has not really been reimagined at all or redesigned. It is its bare bones original shape. They've just built it up a little bit, but they haven't really added much in terms of attendance. That's why it's standing right now around 37,000. Fenway's lowest attendance was recorded in 1964 in a game against the Cleveland Indians. They drew only 306 fans. And then they had a sellout streak from 2003 until 2013, and that broke the Cleveland Indians' mid-90s streak, and a lot of Cleveland people were pissed off. That sellout streak, let's be honest, was a little ridiculous. There were games when you could see a bunch of empty seats. Also, you're only dealing with 37,000 in terms of filling it to capacity. You know, Jacobs Field back then, the capacity was 43K, but they did have a sellout streak for a while, basically a decade. It's not extremely hard to sell out Fenway Park. I will also mention, I have noticed, not really this year, but definitely in 2022, there was a lot of empty seats in a few of those games. You know, I know Boston is a great sports town, I'm not saying anything like that, but Definitely over the past few years, I've noticed some more empty seats there. Moving to the number two smallest MLB stadium here in 2023, it is Lone Depot Park. So you can see Lone Depot Park with a capacity just around 36,500. It is expandable right over 37K if you want to scrounge in more people with standing room. Maybe the Marlins make the playoffs. Have the Marlins even hosted a playoff game in Marlins Park or excuse me, Lone Depot Park? I'm not even sure if they have. And then you can see, I don't know why they did this, but they said with football, 34K, I believe Lone Depot Park does host a bowl game every now and then. And then the record attendance was a World Baseball Classic game all the way back in March of 2017, United States versus Dominican Republic. But Marlins Park, you can definitely make the argument, is the true smallest park in MLB because number one on this list was renovated and they purposefully took seats out, but technically it is number two. It's had a really sad life. You know, who would have thought this thing opens up and within three years, they're already closing the entire upper deck because of poor attendance, but that's what happened to really innovative, really cool, just a sad story in Miami with poor attendance and also the Marlins have not helped themselves. I mean, they've had, number one, the ballpark was built way too big. Number two, the Marlins never have a good offense. And you, the reason this ballpark is so small, just a very tiny upper deck, very tiny. And then there's not much left field seating either. They do have a lot of right field seating with two decks, but the upper deck, very, very small, very small middle section contributing to it as well. And then when it comes to the smallest stadium in baseball in 2023, it is Progressive Field. The capacity currently just under 35,000, although with standing room, it is expandable to around 37.5K. They did fit almost 38K in the stadium back when the Indians made the World Series against the Cubs. And then recently, earlier this year, they sold out a game and there was around an, an attendance of 37K. You can see the capacity. It was all the way up to right around 45,000 in 2010, but they have that big time renovation in the 2014 offseason, they strip off the entire right field upper deck. They bring the capacity down by about 6,000, and it's been going down ever since. They take out seats. They put in, 
you know, drinking rails, social spaces. They've really been stripping this stadium and it's all the way down under 35K progressive field. The reason this capacity is so small, it's artificial. It was, again, it was originally, you know, opened with 43K, but they have purposefully taken seats out because of attendance problems. They weren't able to sell those tickets. They were just walls of empty seats. So they decided to renovate and remove them, and that is why there's a capacity of right under 35K, and they're actually doing more renovations where they're taking out more upper deck seats in the future this coming off season. I don't think it's going to affect the overall capacity very much. It'll probably stay right around 34K. Maybe it'll fall a little bit, but it shouldn't be nearly as drastic. I mean, it's already a very small stadium as it is, but either way, guys, that's going to do it for this video. The top five smallest MLB stadiums in 2023. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.